Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fur video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's fur video. So day 10 will take us to the 25th of uh, June. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that. We extend GFS and e ensembles. I'll get on with that for you in a moment. How long the surface will be at the end of video, of course, next four weeks as well. Uh, just say that first video release saves our 7 a.m. forecast. We've also released the EC 30 uh, day uh, forecast for UK and for Europe as well. We're going to have Storm Watch for you tonight, so it's all happening. Uh, please like, share, subscribe on video. Thank you so much for doing that. I hope you're having a lovely Tuesday. Uh, right, so let's turn webcam off. We're going to start off in the tropical Atlantic. Now, look at this. Bear in mind, the uh, tropical storm slash hurricane season only officially started on the 1st of June. Um, we're only 15 days in. We're only a couple of weeks in. And uh, we've got multiple disturbance areas. So, obviously, the first thing to focus on is this up here. That is tropical storm bail. Uh, so Tropical Storm Bill is currently giving maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour with a minimum central pressure of 999 millibars. That uh, developed very rapidly off the east coast of America yesterday. So Tropical Storm Bill is going to continue to push north eastwards and will become a post-tropical storm somewhere around uh, Newfoundland and uh, that sort of area. So uh, that's the first uh, tropical storm, of course. Then we've got two disturbance areas, uh, one just here and another one over here. We've talked about this one in the video before. We have not mentioned this one over near Africa, though, so let's have a look at that one. Uh, it's disturbance two with a 10% chance cyclone formation in the next uh, 48 hours. Uh, a tropical wave located 700 miles uh, south of Cape Verde Islands is producing a large area of cloudiness and disorganised showers. Any, any development of this system should be slow to occur during the next few days, but after a combination of dry air aloft and strong upper-level winds will limit uh, the chances of formation of the wave. So it doesn't look like I have to worry too much about that one. But then we've also got this yellow X over here near Mexico. Let's have a look see what's happening with this one is disturbance one with a 20 percent chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours uh national hurricane center center says a disorganized disorganized showers and thunderstorms continue over the bay of campeche in association with a broad uh low pressure area gradual development of this disturbance is possible during the next couple of days while it meanders near the coast of Mexico. The system should begin to move northward by midweek and a tropical depression is likely to form uh, late in the week uh, when the low moves across the central or northwestern Gulf of Mexico. And it goes on uh, with more information. So that one is very likely to become a tropical storm, uh, you know, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico towards the end of the week and into weekend as it pushes northwards towards the Gulf Coast of uh, the States. The thing with this is it's very, very, very early to be seeing so much activity. So, again, it's probably just backing up the idea that this is going to uh, be another uh, big system, uh, another big um, season, uh, rather. Uh, you know, it's very early days, have so much activity within the, within the tropical and subtropical Atlantic. So uh, it just gives that impression, doesn't it? But once again, the tropical storm hurricane season of uh, 2021 is likely to be another big one, following, of course, a very, very active season that we have in uh, 2020. So keep an eye on it, and uh, we'll bring you up to date with all of the developments over the next few days, uh, weeks, and months. Of course we will. Right, GFS upgrade temp back close home. GFS upgrade temperature and precipitation ensembles next couple weeks will look like, like this. The red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Northampton. So we're starting off a little bit above average at the moment. We're going to go up over the next uh, couple of days. It's going to become quite hot tomorrow across parts of the south and southeast. And then we see a drop in the upper air temperatures through the second half of the week and into weekend back towards average. So uh, we hit like the weekend and into next week. We're very close to average then. And we just stay generally very close to the long term 
30-year average uh, right way through to the end of June uh, then. Picture of S ensembles today are looking a little bit cooler than they did uh, yesterday, I have to say. Yesterday there was this idea, you know, that, that some of the ensemble members in particular uh, were, were bringing up some very hot air uh, from the South potentially. They were outliers, but, but there were quite a few of them bringing up hotter weather in the last week of June or so. I think the GFS ensembles are backed away from that quite a lot. Uh, you know, quite a lot um, today. And uh, I think the GFS ensembles at the moment today are shifting to something a little bit cooler through the final week of June. Perhaps more dramatic than temperature, though, is what's happening with precipitation. Look at this, an absolute deluge coming up towards the end of the week. So for the next uh, day or two, it is going to be largely dry. But from Thursday onwards, we really are bringing in some big precipitation spikes then. A lot of that is thunderstorms and or thundery rain, but it does look as though from around, say, Thursday the 17th through to the uh, early part of next week, uh, around 23rd, 24th of June, this period just here is looking very wet, actually, with, with a lot of precipitation to come. Bear in mind, as I say, a lot of that is thunderstorms, so it's going to be here to miss some areas. We'll get deluges and may, may even get um, sort of flash flooding. Other areas might, uh, you know, completely miss out and have a dry sort of uh, four or five days. But that does look like a window of really quite wet weather. And then as we go into the last week of June, or the last five days or so of June, that period just there, there are still regular precipitation spikes, not as many of them, uh, and not as big, but still regular precipitation spikes looking quite showery, I think, into the last week of uh, June. Temperature anomalies from the 15th to 23rd of June are going to be rather below average. And the precipitation anomaly from the 15th to 23rd of June is going to be drier than average for Scotland and Ireland and wetter than average for England and Wales. And particularly wet, uh, like through the Midlands, Central, Southern and South East England. Again, you see how that is coming up from uh, France. You see how those darker blues, uh, the, the higher anomalies, if you like, stretch back into northern France and ultimately stretch back through the Bay of Biscay into northern Spain. So you can clearly see... Uh, the line there, the thunderstorms pushing uh, northwards from like North Spain and Biscay into southern and southeastern England. Latest wind from that from EarthNorthSchool.net shows that we're drawing up uh, southerly winds just out to our west. Otherwise, we've got very slack winds. These southerly winds are going to be pushing northwards over the next couple of days, bringing hotter temperatures again, but also an increasing risk of thunderstorms. Right, let's go through the generic charts. Well, and for this, I shall put the uh, webcam back on. Hello, I'm back. Right, so let's have a look at weather out first of all uh, with the UK Met uh, out to 168 hours. Right, so we begin on Friday, thundering area of low pressure at midnight on Friday across northern parts of, uh, of uh, France. That thundery low pushing northwards from Friday or through Friday into Saturday, could bring some torrential rain and thunder into southern southeast parts because it's always dry, you'll notice, with this ridge out to the north and to the west too. Into the weekend, going rather slack on Saturday, but could still be some big showers and thunderstorms. And on into Sunday, the next low, this time from the Atlantic, trying to uh, get him. There is another fungi low over France as well, you'll notice. That fungi low could give us a glancing blow through the course of Sunday, but it looks like it's more centred over France and the low countries, but the low pressure from the Atlantic is pushing in from uh, the west. So we bring rain in from the west, essentially, and cooler temperatures as well. So as we get towards uh, day uh, get towards uh, day 8, 168 hours a week away, uh, we have changed the wind direction. We've lost the sort of humidity, humid southerly winds, and we turn the wind round to the west, which will be a cooler wind direction, bringing in showers, in the north, possibly some longer spells of rain um, as well. And temperatures and humidity will be lowering, of course, by the early part of next week. Right, that's how the UK met. So let's have a look at the uh, GFS Midnight Run then at Vatar. So uh, this is how things look on Friday. So a ridge of high pressure out to our northwest on Friday, turning it dry, cool, and fresh of air. Thundery low over France. That drifts northwards, bringing threat of some heavy rain, maybe thunderstorms to the Midlands, southern south, beating through Friday itself. That's midnight Saturday with below pressure across East Anglia. We will be doing storm watch for you uh, this evening, by the way. So, uh, storm watch, if you're waiting for it, will be released uh, this evening. Might do storm watch live tomorrow at 6 o'clock. How does that sound? Let me know in the comments. 
Uh, right, so this is Sunday. Uh, again, another fun G blow across northern parts of France on Sunday. Low pressure developing out to uh, West, just gradually getting more and more unsettled as we're going uh, along. And then into the early part of next week, we're looking cooler with winds in from more of a north northwesterly direction, but still probably uh, rather showery at that point. We're heading up towards day 10 now with low pressure starting to roll in from off the Atlantic. So the GFS midnight run takes a little bit longer than the UK met to bring the Atlantic in, but eventually it does so. And uh, by day 10, which is 25th of June, we're beginning to go rather more Atlantic driven. And then we're going to quite a cool and unsettled showery type spell into the last sort of days of June uh, with low pressure to our northeast, high pressure to our southwest, lining up the wind direction and the jet stream on a northwest southeast alignment. So cool and showery, I think basically sums it up there right way to the beginning of July. Today, so as we get to with the GFS uh, runs, is to Thursday, the 1st of July. Looking quite cool and showery then. Right, let's have a look at 6Z. Uh, so again, we've got uh, high pressure up to our northwest on Friday. A thundery low trying to push up from France. Again, that could bring a real deluge to parts of uh, southern, southeastern England, uh, you know, during the course of Friday into Saturday. Thunderstorms could be included in that. That fudgy low moves away, uh, and then this next low develops to our southwest, of course, uh, so that's probably bringing wet weather in from the Atlantic into more western parts of the country. By the way, by next week, the 6th Z has us under a, a, an area of low pressure, trough low pressure, so much cooler there, and also much more showery as well. As going to the Opal next week, and keep that low pressure sticking around. Um, through into the middle part of next week. Much cooler temperatures with that. And uh, and showers along the spells of rain. Heading up towards day 10, that low pressure starts to move away. We raise the heights to our north and northwest. We begin to go a little bit blocked. Um, and winds are still coming in from like a bit of a northeast direction. So still rather cool and still rather showery. I uh, mean, to the extended range with GFS 6 z just basically keeping it rather cool, showery, high pressure sort of out to our west, winds in for more of a northwesterly direction, probably bringing quite a lot of cloud, and there will be some showers possible at times uh, with that. So we go into the latter stages of June on what does look like a rather cool and showery type uh, note. Uh, right, we've got GM. So, uh, again, we've got this ridge out to our northwest on Friday. Not as much of that thundery low, you'll notice, Friday into Saturday. I think the GM is limiting thundery potential at the end of the week. Into the weekend, low pressure moving in off the Atlantic. That changes uh, the weather type. You know, we're losing warmth and humidity from the south, and we bring rain and cooler temperatures in from uh, the North Atlantic. And then quite unsettled really through the early part of next week with low pressure in, winds in from the west, so temperatures are significantly lower, and there are showers or long spells of rain around. The very end of the GM run, it looks like having go pulling some warmth back up from the south again. And then we've got the ECM, uh, which looks like uh, this. So again, we've got this ridge just out to our northwest on Friday, but the fungi low is over uh, France. That fungi low pushes northwards from Friday into Saturday, potentially bringing some thunderstorms into southern southeast parts. Going to the same time, have a ridge out to northwest, keeping it drier up there. And then through the weekend, low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, bringing showers if not some uh, longer spells of rain uh, as well. And then as we go through next week, it just looks rather wetsy, rather cool, rather showery. Uh, really the best of weather with that is in the south, and most showery conditions up in the north. This is uh, getting to the end of next week, Thursday, 24th of June. That looks interesting. That's either the remains of a tropical storm, possibly possibly a hurricane, um, you know, uh, remains uh, up there near, near uh, Newfoundland. So that's an interesting little feature there. Uh, and we get to day 10, and we're still looking rather unsettled, rather Atlantic-driven. Try to pull some warmer air up from the southwest, but uh, the next low is over Ireland, and that will push eastwards and cut off any warmer uh, supply. So definitely, I think, it looks today with the model output, let me know if you comments what you think. Today, it looks like we are entering into a rather more uh, showery, possibly rather more unsettled, and somewhat cooler uh, second half to June. We've been wobbling around for the second half of June. For several days, you'll know that we've been, you know, the model's been very uncertain about where we're going. I've been saying it's up for grabs, what's happened in the second half of June. I think a bit of a shift today towards a cooler and more unsettled outlook for the second half of June. 
Let me know in the comments what you think. Right, let's go through the ECL precipitation type forecast uh, from Tometio.com. So rain, wet weather in the northwest over the next uh, 24 hours or so, mainly dry and getting hotter for southern and southeast parts of the country. And then into the upper part of next, or into the middle part of next week, I should say, or what am I talking about? Into the second half of this week, up come these thunderstorms uh, from the south. So this is uh, this is Thursday morning where we've got storms here through the midlands central southern southeastern parts of england as well those storms running up the eastern side through thursday uh morning maybe it goes a little bit quieter uh later thursday before more storms start to gather from france and push north particularly affecting southern southeastern areas um as we go through friday and into the early hours of saturday all of that gets out of the way and then in comes low pressure from the atlantic might be a little bit funny that, but I think this is more sort of Atlantic driven wet weather uh, later in the weekend. Uh, with just regular bouts of rain then pushing through uh, as we run up towards uh, day 10, looking rather more unsettled, particularly so for more northern and western areas. Right, let's have a look at the options on the table within the ECM ensembles for day 10. So this is the option on the table within the ECM ensembles for day 10. Gets us to the 25th of June. Uh, all members, 51 of them, all members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure out to our west. And there's probably some sort of slack trough coming through here. The trough is probably weakening, but I think it's enough to be bringing uh, showery conditions. And then as we move on to uh, two weeks out, these are the options that we've got. It gets us to the 30th of June. 16 members of the ECM ensembles have blocking to the north with low pressure or weak pressure, I suppose, to the south. Could be quite warm and showery. 15 have low pressure to the north of Scotland. That's going to be uh, cool and quite showery and unsettled. 11 have high pressure uh, just out to our west. Mainly dry, but winds are in from a northwesterly direction with that, so it could be a little bit, a uh, little bit cooler. And nine with low pressure to our north and northeast, and looking rather flat and westy. Hints of high pressure going towards Greenland as well, with that one. As I say, generally, I think there is a shift here for the last days of June into something rather cooler and more unsettled in the model output today. CFSB2, finally, means a 500 millibar heights break down into week periods. The first week period will take us from the 15th to the 21st of July. The coming week, we'll see the high pressure slipping to the east. Low pressure will be getting closer to us from both the south and from the west. Uh, initially thundering, and then maybe going cooler with winds coming in off the Atlantic and quite unsettled. Week 2 does look pretty unsettled now. This is the 22nd, 28th of June with low pressure to our north and northwest income. The western is so so obviously that is going to be a cooler and more unsettled Atlantic driven type spell of weather. Week three is the 29th of June to the 5th of July. High pressure trying to strengthen to our east, having a go at bringing winds back in to the southeast. I would have thought with that, but again, low pressure out to the northwest is also trying to maintain this westerly flow with high pressure uh, just there. So that's a bit of a complicated week. Week four has us back under high pressure, though. This is the 6th through to the 12th of July. The high is back in then over UK and Northern Europe. That would turn drier and hotter as we move into the second week of July. But of course, that is a long way out. Right, so if you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. You're going to see future, future web content. If you do that, tell friends and family to subscribe. Thank you so much for doing this. Guys, love to drop a comment and let us know uh, what you think. Do you think the models today have shifted towards a rather cooler and more unsettled outlook? I think they have. Uh, but let me know in the comments whether you agree with that. It looks like it could be shaping up for a rather more unsettled uh, second half uh, to June. And temperatures possibly beginning to slide as well. Where that takes us we get into July remains to be seen though, uh, of course. Right, we're going to be back later on with Stormwatch, so check that out uh, later on. If you'd like to see a Stormwatch live stream uh, tomorrow at 6pm, let me know uh, what you think about that uh, in the comments. But uh, for this 10 to 14 day, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.